What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the Relic Crate video. This prop has been my biggest challenge to date and honestly it has pushed me immensely as a prop maker and cosplayer. I'll be going over every step of the creation process today as well as covering some general tips for prop making. There's a lot to go over so let's just jump right into it. Where are we going today? To the hardware store. What are we going to the hardware store for? To buy supplies for a giant sarcophagus? <laughs> The base of the relic crate is insulation foam board, also known as XPS or extruded polystyrene rigid foam insulation. This is a lightweight material that I use for many of my large props. In fact, I've used it in both of my League of Legends poppy tutorials. XPS comes in multiple sizes, and for my project I use both 2 inch and 1.5 inch thicknesses. I ended up needing to buy two 4 by 8 foot 2 inch thick boards. The 1.5 inch board was left over from previous projects however. Other key materials for this project include a lot of Loctite PL300 foam board adhesive. I believe I ended up going through almost five big tubes. I also bought a tool to spread the adhesive. Equally important is a decent respirator. Previously, I had only used dust masks, and I definitely encourage you to get a decent respirator like this one if you'll be working with any spray paints or plasti dip. When I began this project in January, there were not many references readily available for this prop. I originally made my own references by looking at Orphea's announcement cinematic that premiered at BlizzCon 2018. I made these by sketching out each half and then digitizing them. I expanded my designs proportionately and sketched them onto my pattern paper, which is just simple scotch dust cover paper you can get at stores like Michaels or Joann fairly affordably. This paper is great for all pattern making, whether it's props or for sewing. I'm able to scale my props to an accurate real life proportion by using some simple algebra and figuring ratios. I measured and drew cut lines for the base shapes of my relic crate onto the foam board, then cut them out. This was a painful and annoying process to do by hand, even with a large knife, but it's not impossible. If you have access to the tools, I would recommend that you use a bandsaw or other power tool to deal with this part. When you have a massive project like this, I recommend breaking it down into multiple pieces that you can then micromanage. So I started with simple shapes and built onto those with more XPS to make this a more manageable project. For the raised edges of the crate, I used my pattern paper to transfer the design to the XPS. To save on as much board as possible, I split the design into different sections for some pieces. I marked out the center of the board for when I got to dremeling. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of my dremeling as my setup was pretty difficult in the location I did most of it, as well as panic and worry that I wouldn't be able to finish on time, and so I apologize for that. But to kind of explain, I used a higher grit dremel head for most of it, as XPS is fairly delicate when you're sanding it. After dremeling, I used various grits of sandpaper ranging from 50 up to 220 to get the board as smooth as I possibly could. With all the board pieces cut out and ready to be assembled, I used my PL300 foam board adhesive and spreading tool to glue all the board pieces together for the front and back. When doing this, you've got to be sure to put adhesive on both sides of the board for them to fully stick together reliably. I cleaned up the edges with a few wet paper towels. Seriously, don't be shy with the adhesive. If you aren't generous with it, it's likely that your boards won't fully adhere to each other. Before attaching the sideboards and actually building the crate, there was plenty more work to do. I sealed my XPS with several layers of wood glue as well as created a 2mm foam inlay to cover the inner portion of the exterior and further protect my XPS board base. I used the PL300 adhesive once again to glue my 2mm foam inlay to the boards. So as you can see, I've got several layers of wood glue on here. Um, it is three layers on both sides, on both the top part and then the back of this. Um, however, I do have some holes here that need to be filled up. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Like in here, I've got a little bit of a gap here, especially in these corners and whatnot. So I'm gonna go in with some quick seal and a little bit of water and kind of fill in those holes and those gaps so that hopefully everything looks pretty flush. I 
I did a mock-up of the sideboards and marked out holes for the handles as well as the dowel structure inside of the crate and the width of the boards for referencing when gluing. I then glued the sideboards in place on the back panel and covered them with 2mm foam the same way as I did for the inlays on the front and back. Next up was creating the harness so I could actually carry this monstrosity on my back. I've never made a harness before and I couldn't find any particularly helpful information as most harnesses are geared towards wings, so I got creative and designed my own harness. All right, so this is my harness system, or at least the anchor is what I'm calling it. And the an I say anchor because it, it, it anchors to the crate. Um, it's, you know, I've got my front board here that goes on the outside on the exterior. This is the back board that you won't see. It'll be on the interior. Um, and I've got these very large screws there. This size is screw right here. So they'll go through, it goes through the strap, which goes through the front board, which goes through the insulation foam board, and then uh, comes out through this other board back here. So this is how you wear the harness. The harness sits under the costume. I used heavy duty strapping for most of it and the straps slip through slits in the back of the garments to connect to the crate. There's a clip on the bottom back that attaches to two rings on the anchor and the two shoulder straps being at different lengths are what make the crate sit at an angle on my back. I made this shoulder pad slash clip cover piece to help protect not only my shoulder where the most weight is, but also to keep the metal clip from scratching up the prop. This isn't the most comfortable harness and most of the weight is on my shoulders, but it works. If I could remake it, I would have made a full body harness to help distribute the weight more evenly and maybe shorten the straps coming from the crate instead of the straps on the harness. Next up is the dowel structure. I used 7 8 inch diameter wooden dowels from Michaels cut with a strong handsaw. The dowels extend into the boards about an inch on either side. I did this because I wanted to lessen the pressure on the PL300 adhesive and make sure the crate had little chance of falling apart from how much weight would be on the finished prop. I think this is an extremely crucial part of the build and it's key to its structural integrity. I filled the dowel holes with PL300 and inserted all of the dowels, leaving it to dry overnight before repeating the process with the opposite side. I tested my dowel holes before gluing the whole crate together as well. With the harness installed and the dowel structure in place, it was finally time to close this bad boy up. I put down PL300 for the sideboards and the dowel holes and I placed the pieces together. I then let the adhesive cure for 24 hours. I created a box shape to connect the very tops of the crate out of L200, which is the gray foam, and 6mm EVA foam, which is the black one. I marked off where exactly it would sit and I used contact cement to adhere it. The only way I was able to use contact cement on top of my XPS board is because I sealed the board with multiple thick layers of wood glue first. Do not put contact cement directly on XPS, it will melt and destroy your project immediately. Then I was able to Plasti Dip. I went through many, many cans of Plasti Dip with this prop, not only for the crate itself, which took about one and a half cans per side, but also by using it for all of the details that go on the exterior of the crate. With the crate entirely coated with Plasti Dip, I masked off the edging so I could paint the inside with purple spray paint. You see me using actual masking tape here, but I did switch to blue painter's tape. The masking tape actually peeled up some of my Plasti Dip, but painter's tape was much more gentle and I didn't have that problem with it so I would definitely recommend that instead. I then painted both inner spaces and the sides with purple spray paint. When the purple was done, I masked off the purple and I spray painted the gold. I peeled off the paper and then began weathering and detailing the crate as needed. I mostly used a black acrylic wash to age the gold paint and make it look more ancient.
For the part of the crate that sits against my back, there's wood detailing, so I added that with various shades of purple acrylic to create highlights and shadows. You'll notice there are also some grooves in the foam, which were created using my wood burning tool before I had Plasti dip the crate. And yeah, I do use my hands for a lot of prop painting. Finger painting is a legitimate skill, okay? But for real, it helps add a more natural blend than what you can get with a brush or sponge sometimes. I then coated it with a lot of Mod Podge. I want to find a stronger sealer, but for now I have this giant vat of Mod Podge, so I just used what I had on hand, considering I was already very over budget for this cosplay. The next step was to add on all of the exterior details to the crate. I actually made these before I constructed most of the base crate itself. So for the bird heads, I started with two 10 inch diameter styrofoam half balls. These two bird heads have different designs and I use slightly different methods for them. I started by marking out the design on the bird heads. For the bird on the back of the crate, and by back I mean the side of the crate that sits against my back, I used mostly hand sculpted foam clay. I covered that ball in plastic wrap and sculpted the details on top of it. I then set my details aside to dry for roughly 48 hours. I made the eyebrow parts from L200 foam. For the front bird head, after marking out the details, I covered it in masking tape and traced the details onto the tape. I transferred the masking tape onto pattern paper and cut out the pieces. For this head, I used all L200 foam. I coated the styrofoam balls in about four coats of Mod Podge, which was a mistake. I should have used wood glue instead. There was some melting, but nothing too bad, luckily. I used a wood burning tool and Dremel to mark out the nostrils on each bird head. The back bird nostrils were added with a couple extra pieces of foam on the inside. I then filled in any gaps I could find with Quick Seal. I gave them a couple coats of Plasti Dip and painted them. For all the crate details, I painted them using the same gold spray paint I used on the crate and I weathered with black acrylic. I finished by sealing with Mod Podge. Behind the front bird head and in the bird eyes, there are purple transparent pieces. For this, I used transparent Warbla called Transpa Art which I custom dyed with Rit Dye More in the color Royal Purple. It turned out a bit more blue than I intended, so the way I fixed this was to color the battery-powered lights inside of the crate with a pink Sharpie. Shockingly, this actually worked! Sharpie ink is an alcohol-based ink and will color plastic easily. I attached the transparent warbler with hot glue and placed the bird head on top with Velcro. Next up, the handles. There are two types of handles on the crate front handles and side handles. Both were made using a similar method and materials. The side handles have a 10 mm Eva foam base and a thin dowel structure. I added some 2 mm craft foam for support and structure. I created a Eva foam piece to wrap around the sides of the handles and beveled the edges so they would lay fairly flat together. I heat shaped those and then contact cemented it all together. I also had a small cap piece to sit on top. I then used Quick Seal to fill in any gaps I could find. For the front handles, I used a similar dowel structure and built on top of it with gray L200 foam. The accent on top is 2mm craft foam. Again, I did the whole Plasti Dip paint, weather, and seal process to finish them off. To attach the handles, I used hot glue and let it cool down a bit before I inserted them into holes in the crate. I also put contact cement on the bottom of the handles to get them adhered just a bit better. Next up is the door details. These were made from 6mm Eva foam. I drew out the pattern and then added about 3 quarters inches to each side so they would raise up and be 3D. I then cut them down the center and transferred the, the patterns to foam, cut those out, beveled the edges, contact cemented them together, and after Plasti Dip paint, weather, and seal, I contact cemented them onto the crate. Near the top of the crate on the front and back are what I refer to as arch insets. This was definitely the hardest part of the crate to figure out. I decided to create foam pieces that I could set right on top of the edges. I did this by drawing them out with pattern paper and transferring them to 6mm Eva foam. I dremeled the foam very carefully to create beveled edges. I made the circles in the middle with foam clay and then I just plastic dip paint weather seal and attached with contact cement. The top and bottom details like this crown and these shapes are a thick 12mm floor mat Eva foam. There are straps on the crate as well. I made these using a brown vinyl. Straps and belts are fairly simple to make. You basically just create your pattern, you cut out two for each strap, sew them wrong sides together, leaving a space open so you can flip them inside out. 
You flip them and then top stitch them together and close up the space you left. The buttons on the straps are the paper brad style buttons I used all over my cosplay and the material I used mostly is thigh bra. There's a buckle on this crate strap that's basically the same as the cross body belt buckle so I used the same pattern for each and just expanded the crate buckle. I created the eyelet by using my wood burning tool. I started with old belt buckles from the thrift store, which, by the way, don't buy brand new belt buckles. They cost like three to four times as much as ones you can find at the thrift store or Goodwill. I originally glued a two millimeter foam backing to the buckle to hold it in place while I hand sculpted foam clay for the buckle itself. I let the foam clay dry for about a week, making sure to peel it off the back of the buckle and flipping it over so the inside could dry. I did a lot of hand sanding for these to get the correct arch and edge shapes. And of course, Plasti Dip paint, weather seal, and I connected it to the strap and put them on. And there you have it! That's how I made Orpheus Relic Crate from Heroes of the Storm. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you found something helpful, please leave a like and comment down below, as it really helps me grow my channel and reach more cosplayers like you. Overall, the crate took 150 hours to make. And the cosplay altogether took a total of 380 hours. If you want to see more of my work and follow me with my upcoming projects, I'll have my social media linked below. If you've got any questions or are looking for advice on a specific cosplay problem, you can always DM me over on Instagram and I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more cosplay content in the future!